What's going on there, Reject Nation? Koi's back with us after missing episode five. Did you like episode five? A lot of crying. All right, and it wasn't here on camera. You, you robbed the audience of that this reaction. This is us at home. I just kept it to myself. We're at the finale of Moon Knight, people. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. It's been amazing. I'm sad to see it end right now. Let's see what's in store. Let's see if it sticks the landing. You guys, full-length watch alongs we seek with a time code are available for our super sexy rejects at our page. Patreon page. Thank you all for joining us, especially for the Moon Knight reactions. It means a lot. Follow Koi on the socials, TikTok and YouTube. He's posting all the time. It's annoying, but it's good. Also, leave a like. That would probably be the most beneficial thing you could do for this video today. Thank you guys so much. And thank you to the boys at Prepper for helping us edit down the highlights for Moon Knight. And thank you, John, for being John the John. Oh, thanks for being Greg. Let's do it! They keep hinting, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Who wants to heal the world? Whoa. <laughs> Neato. Uh, outside. We'll, we'll We're starting with Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> show me your papers. I don't need to show you my papers. Huh? You need to show us your soul. Ooh. Healing. <laughs> the Lord's work. Justice. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> Listen to the goddess, <laughs> perhaps. It's Mark who's telling you to stop. What the hell is this? Uh, huh? He's dead. And I'm talking to you through dead people right now. But <laughs> I won't. <laughs> it's time to go! No one's questioning who this person is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the face of a good woman. This is like a, a very small group of people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. disturbance. Someone is trying to release Amit. I don't trust her. Why? Haro. I mean, Mark tried to tell you pretty clearly. I believe what the gods have hidden from mankind. <laughs> Let's break them all. God fights. This is all so avoidable. Nice. I love a good off camera fight. That's right. <laughs> That's choreography. That's <laughs> off screen. Oh, here it goes. Oh, we're going big. Oh, that's yes. cool. Wow. Okay. My name is Amit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do some Marvel comedy. <laughs> to whom do I owe my gratitude? Your humble disciple, my goddess, to whom you owe nothing. Your scales lack balance. Oh. Oh. I had hoped my penance might correct my imbalance, but I see now that's impossible. Oh, whoa. You are the avatar that I need. Serve me, and you will find peace. Oh, yeah. Do not let the pain of the past control you. It's like the theme of this whole show. Oh. I am in need of an avatar. Would you, Leila El Foolish, protect the travelers of the You night? joke. Right to business. <laughs> I must rebind Amit. How? Only an avatar can do it. He said no. Uh, <laughs> time has been cruel to you. Indeed. I cannot allow you to proceed. There's someone else here. Right. I'm going to release him. 
Maybe it was that random person on our team that we didn't. <laughs> we <laughs> <spent>. The face <laughs> man. <laughs> the only one. We need to go back for him. You don't need him anymore, Mark. So I get to go on to eternal peace and he just stays lost in the sand forever? No, I'm not good with that. Think about this. Oh. Summon the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Need a lift. <laughs> I'm Jake Lockley. <laughs> <laughs> just pulls up. <laughs> Looking pretty rough, man. Huh. Way back then, we were so young. You saved me. I survived because I knew I wasn't alone. You were always there, alive, full of hope. And I tried to protect that, and I failed. I couldn't protect you. Oh. Nah, man. You didn't have been. And all of that, all that field back there was looking to, it's looking pretty good. There's no way in hell I'm going to abandon you. Oh, buddy. By the only real superpower. I ever had. Oh. oh wow. That was so sweet. Uh, oh, yes. Oh. Steven. It's incredible. These are two different people to me. <laughs> My no, brain right. is just... You came back. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, I, I did a whole little speech there. <laughs> oh, kiss him. Kiss. <laughs> Got fight. Cool. <laughs> you can do it. We're almost there. Yeah. God. I'm throwing us down. Just go. Come on, Mark. No. It's gotta be the both of you. Osiris, you old softy. <laughs> now run. Hippo. Hippo. <laughs> Resurrection. Oh, ho, 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 <laughs> nice. Here we go. Haven't seen the Moon Knight suit and truly moving in a while. I knew you'd miss me. <laughs> Layla turned you down, didn't she? Amit has been freed. <laughs> Mark Spector, I need your help. Uh, just curious about something. How's this whole new arrangement going to work then? Even Grant, I was not speaking to you. How's this deal going to work? You would negotiate now? I would release you both. You have my word. Uh -huh. Now, how the heck are we going to get to Cairo? You forget, little worm. I am still the god of the night sky. Oh, all right. You know what? I think you can take this one, Mark. Hurry up, idiots! <laughs> Yeah, nice. oh, cool. Are you there? Uh. Oh, God. God oh, damn it. You changed your mind. I would be delighted to accept you as my avatar. Hey. <laughs> your father is going to be over the moon when he hears. <laughs> my father? Yes, I met him when I took him to the field of reeds. Oh. Oh. I'm doing this or what? I have a fabulous costume. <laughs> 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 They're seeing all kinds of things lately over there. <laughs> Holy Whoa. crap. Judge. <laughs> oh, that's pretty terrifying, actually. Uh -oh. Damn. Mass judgment. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, we are really going there. Hey. I didn't think we'd go there. <laughs> Kaiju battle. How do you fight a giant alligator god? Ha. <laughs> Cool! I love it! 
She looks great. Damn, Harrow got slighted. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Nice. Oh, that's badass. Oh, cool. Oh, yes. Whoa. Oh. Wow. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Amazing, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> really jazzed about showing you these new skill sets we have. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh man, going down. <laughs> There's yeah. the shot. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Damn. Oh. Oh, cool. oh, so I love I this when you get it out. It's like a fight game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Swap like... them out. Oh, no. Those the people there are getting judged so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad about my life. <laughs> Souls are triple condemned. Egyptian superhero. I am. Hell yeah. Oh. It's like a Ghostbusters stream. Whoa! Get up, Jake. <laughs> wow. Whoa. That's a hell of a shot. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> oh. oh! That wasn't you, was it, Steven? Not a chance, mate. Jake Lockley has entered the game. Whoa! Grab my hands, we can start the spell. No. Take the chance that Amit finds a way out. She will kill again. I sound just like her. You want them dead? <laughs> Do it yourself. We're rushing a little bit now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One episode left. The finale rush. <laughs> As you wish. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Conshu and Ahmed are real. No. What if we disagree, Dad? Oh, it was him. What if we believe something different? Oh. Yeah, you see that, don't you? Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, I see it. Why am I bleeding? Well, it is tempting to accept your diagnosis, Doc. We'd rather go save the world. Hey, this guy is. Dude, mid sentence accent swishing. Holy shit. Mm. Can't believe it worked. <laughs> I can't believe you live in this freaking mess. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm <not> sure sitting. <laughs> Sit out. Huh. Feelings! <laughs> Thoughts! <laughs> Processing! <laughs> oh boy.
the fact that we're all talking right now is a good sign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soak it in. Just absorb it. Right <laughs> Are we going to get a post credit scene? I just want him driving a cab. I think the way of handling Jake is exactly what I want. That's what I've been saying is like, just keep teasing him and then bring him for the next season. But like, keep it ominous and focus, focus on these two. Mm. And then to discover him. But make it clear that artist. there is yeah, another, yeah. yeah. Make it really distinguished, yeah. Maybe we'll get him in a post credit scene. I beg your pardon. Captain America? <laughs> oh, are they gonna make him Spanish? Yeah. Actually? Oh, that's cool. That would totally work. <laughs> They're knocked out, man. <laughs> 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 Yeah! <laughs> it's worth the episode! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes me so happy! Oh, come on. Cool. <laughs> Mark Spector truly believed that after he and I parted ways, I wanted his wife to be my avatar. And he has no idea how troubled he truly is. Oh, no. He's a limbo driver instead of a cab driver. Meet my friend, Jake Lockley. <laughs> yeah. Why te toca perder? Oh, dang. Wait. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Savage. Spectre. <laughs> oh, so Conchu is like using him, but not letting Mark in on it. Yeah. So he's the true assassin mercenary, like all controlling. He doesn't even need a suit up. Nope. He just takes him out as a cabbie limo driver. Like, and I like that cool. Conchu was in the suit because he didn't need to suit up. That's cool to like because they changed Stephen Grant to be like this British guy <laughs> who's not a billionaire, <laughs> and British then British. to change Jake Lockley from like New York cabbie driver to I don't know honoring Oscar Isaac's roots a little bit more. So why did the, the randomly have an accent a couple times in the in the psych ward? To yeah. throw us off, dude. And that New wasn't York him. Teams. That was I think that was purposely done for the scenes. I said it. I said it wasn't maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe he actually <laughs> has a weird accent but he speaks Spanish. Alright. Well I was thinking was that they were just doing that to throw us off. Yeah. Because that's what I thought like to to really distinguish better, especially when he's like switching in and out of accents in a particular scene because it sounds like mark has like a chicago accent and it just comes out a little bit more an extra enunciation of the of the yeah twang. that's one thing i chalked it up to well, but i also sense. thought i was wrong too I mean, <laughs> but it would also make sense for something like that to come out in a more drugged up state yeah when i get a boss when i drink yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. no i thought it of that too out. yeah it's just like when you're a little bit more uh uninhibited you know that'll come out of your subconscious no it was a mistake on oscar isaac's and yeah no he's very he was, too much he's credit. messy with his yeah. acting if yeah. i think of anything yeah. too much credit if i have one complaint it's oscar isaac it, and his messy vocal work this whole episode was great other than oscar isaac's acting yeah you really yeah. threw me yeah if we could just redo this but like cast somebody else pedro pascal it's a weird feeling when my <laughs> favorite moments that's nah, not my favorite moment but it's definitely like probably my favorite moment <laughs> uh, <laughs> post credit scene. scene yeah well it's not even like truly a post credit it's kind of the ending like you know in its own way it, it's it's less of a post credit than most like it's an yeah. actual it's key to the story definitely in a way that I don't think post credit scenes generally are. They usually set up something as opposed to this, which concludes something. Still sets up something. They're going to go around hit Manny people. Yeah. I hope Oscar Isaac comes pictures. back. <laughs> All right. Let's discuss this show, people. Shitty chat. All right, guys. We got microphones. Yeah. Because Hooray. we got a podcast where this goes up. So I was like, hey, let's, let's mic up. Cool. Be professionals. It's not going to be any different. <laughs> just, it's going to really improve the quality of our conversation. Yeah, I feel much more entitled. Just I'm a, so much more eloquent. Just a drastic mm. change from okay audio to drastically better audio. This <laughs> feels good in my eardrums. Yeah. <laughs> just a massive switch. <laughs> 4K audio. <laughs> now people will never be able to go back to the old audio. Dolby sound. Um. So this uh this episode really showed us that 
they're getting all their diversity out of the way with one character here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got every uh, ethnicity and nationality within him. He's got a sp- sp- Latino guy, a Jewish guy. And then the Egyptian the British girl. Guy. British guy. Yeah. British Both guy. sound good. British why, why guy British in the MCU. Guy. <laughs> you know what? We haven't seen a lot of British superheroes. Uh, so, look, we talked a little bit while I was prepping some uh, footage, and uh, it was taking longer than usual. And so we're going to have to naturally regurgitate some of those conversations. Uh, not a lot. We only talked for like five minutes about it. But, hey, John. Yes. Why don't you kick us off with your thoughts on what you thought about the Moon Knight finale? Be honest. That's moon- all that's required. Absolutely. The Moon Knight finale, I thought, was pretty decent. I-, I liked it. I had a good time. I really enjoyed the imagination. I enjoyed some of the crazy circumstances that came to pass. Uh, I do feel like this could have easily been a couple episodes worth of material, especially coming out of the last episode that reached such wonderful depths and heights of character exploration. Felt like that stuff definitely had to be fast-tracked in this episode. Um, So yeah, it it left me wanting some things, but I had a great time. So it's not like a slam dunk of an ending, but you know, I mean, it, it got there. (laughs) <laughs> I would definitely watch more. I would be thrilled to return to and expand this world. But but yeah, it feels maybe a little bit limited from this vantage point. Koi. I thought we got a lot of the things we'd been seeking, but I do think we got them very quickly. I would have loved another episode in the field of reeds and finding out what it was like for Mark Spector to enjoy peace, what his experience of peace would even be beyond that one beautiful shot where it looked like they let Oscar go to the spa. But I also think there was a beautiful moment between the brothers that could have been earned a little more by pushing it. Now, obviously, they have a format of, you know, six episodes at Marvel, but I think the flexibility of letting the scripts and the story they're telling breathe and let it be seven, let it be eight. I think what Marvel, the the way Marvel can improve is by letting that flex. You should tell the story in the amount of time the story takes to tell, not in a certain allocated amount of episodes you shape your story around. I think that's kind of backwards the way they're doing it right now, and I think this episode was the first time in the Moon Knight series, I felt that. In all of the Marvel series, I felt a little bit of hurry up and wait, except Loki. I think Loki is the one that I thought the pacing stayed consistent throughout and as such has my favorite Marvel finale and as such is personally my favorite Marvel show because it has six episodes that all feel justified, whereas Moon Knight, I said if it stuck the landing was going to be my new favorite Marvel show. It's very good. I really, really enjoyed it, but I think Loki is a stronger arc and i do think if moon knight had been perhaps seven had been um you know more in the psychology at the finale and a little bit more payoff it could have taken that number one spot and as it stands now i think it's my number two really enjoyed the finale uh but i i did feel some wanting yeah yeah i i i'd echo everything you guys said i think i would say i liked it a little bit less than you guys because I'm just trying to push buttons in the comments. Marvel whoa, hater now. Whoa. I just want people this to disagree. This is a Captain Marvel movie. So you can't talk like edgy, that. All right? Edgy. Edgy. <laughs> Say it as it's so <laughs> <laughs> It's like 80s. Engage <laughs> in the comments. If you're listening on the only the podcast, you can't, you can't you see can't, what I'm you doing. See the biceps, yeah, the know, rippling the biceps, biceps happening. through my my, my, my flannel, my biceps. flannel. The the veins are biceps. consuming like your Batman. arm. He's got '90s Nirvana <laughs> biceps. Uh, no, I, I would say that this episode had some of the coolest moments that I've seen in the entire series. They're like they're the the fighting. I th- while not long. There's not one really, truly long fight scene in any of these episodes, is there? They're all, no. they're all brief. Everything's brief. For this one, you got two fight scenes, effectively. I thought that was very creative because they distinguished the fighting between Mr. Knight and Moon Knight very well, and especially Jake Lockley. He's it's all off screen. screen. <laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloodbath. It was Jake Lockley. <laughs> so that must have been Jake... Was that Jake in the first episode? Too? I think so. And I also think it was Jake, obviously, in that one time they were both like, what? What was that? But I think there's probably, if you rewatch it, a couple episodes where the bloodbath means it was Jake. I think we saw Jake probably more than we think we did. Probably. Probably. There's going to be a lot of people doing videos about that 
racking hundreds yes. of thousands of views on them. Um, and so, yeah, that, I, I think that some of the fighting was some of the coolest we've gotten. I actually was really worried once I saw massive Amit, like growing Amit was like, oh, crap. I was, <laughs> that was like my first thought. And then as it progressed, I actually thought it was really cool. Kaiju fight. It was a kaiju. Is that how you say it? Kaiju. I'm George Takei. <laughs> Kei, kaiju fight. Kei, George Takei's fight. Kaiju fight. Kaiju fight. Uh, uh, game on. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a really cool fight. Um, I mean, it wasn't like the coolest fight ever, but it was better than I expected it to be. I like some of the phasing of even just Conchu on the ground level of how he moved there. Uh, so yeah, I, li I like when like they go all giant and you know the, that slow motion. When they the, swoop, the, feel the scale. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that when like they Pacific swooped rim. and the car was so tiny. That was one of my favorite shots. Well, and that was a good uh, establisher that like, oh yeah, they, they, these are physical forms and they are wreaking havoc over here. Yeah, <laughs> big. yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that was really great. Layla, Layla. Layla. I like the acoustic version better from uh, Eric Clapton Unplugged more mm. than um, the actual rock and roll edition. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's right, Fight guys. Words. He's an artist. I'm an artist because I named one of the Eric two Clapton. Eric Clapton songs. I, I like a more obscure version of a popular <laughs> song. Uh, you might know Eric Clapton. I know his B-sides. I know his uh, you know, the concert. Um, so, yeah, I thought Layla's uh, costume was great. And um, full disclosure... We don't know who she's original playing. Character, man, I'm it, telling you. it might be an original Marvel an original character, character, but if you guys know who the character is from a comic book, please let us know. Uh, which would be very interesting for the MCU to have like a, a, a like a, 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 a another female hero. We don't have too many lady heroes in the MCU. Girls get it done. An Egyptian hero, and if it's going to be completely original. And I wow. honestly, I think it is, and I feel like this is a really cool way to start introducing new heroes in this direction. Like through Harley women? Quinn came through and the animated series, and yeah. then became a comic book. Character. Oh, I get what you're saying. So like having a TV through show women. introduces yeah. through women through through the TV show. Many comic book artists don't like writing male females. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like that's a really like smart way for the MCU to start to be unique from the comics. Yeah, yeah, very true. I thought her powers were really cool. It was Wonder Woman esque, sure. Um, at the same time, it still felt like it's its own thing. I like the use of the flight, the wings. Um, I, I was a bit concerned that it was going to be in. Once I said that and then I saw where my thoughts were going and then I heard what some of the comments might say. And now I'm going <laughs> to stop there. And I'm going to say this instead. Well, no, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And I'm going to stop you from saying what you're probably going to say. Some of you some people out there was that I was concerned that it was going to be Layla was going to save the whole day. And. Now I know a lot of people might go, oh, freaking woke agendas and whatever. Mary Sue. Yeah, and I didn't, uh, that's not where I was going with it. I just thought I might, I might undercut the show a little bit uh, just for the fact that your title character is not the one who's the hero <laughs> or like actually saves the day. But that's something I did like about this as well. Like it gave us the, the arc of the character fully. Steven and Mark coming together, embracing each other as brothers mm -hmm. and learning to literally just live during the day uh, like with each other like they just they know how to alternate back and forth it, it kind of kind of happened a little quick to me in so terms that one more episode i really would have loved this one should more have episode. been two episodes like if you if you play the episodes back to back of five and six steven's gone for like 15 minutes that's it as opposed to like having the reads having the breakdown having yeah. the bond having the development of the two voices having all of that take longer have the psychology back in the psych board have that developed have the harrow stuff last a little bit longer have the fight work in the same way probably yeah. the same pace but just letting the moments breathe other than the fight because i feel like the fight was the right amount of time i feel like the fight especially the switching mm -hmm. between mr knight and moon knight was so special because it was so rapidly between the two. If it was longer, it wouldn't have felt special as long. And then juxtaposing the small contained fight with the kaiju fight was really cool visually. So I loved all that. But whenever it wasn't fighting, I did feel like they were like, we got to get back to the fighting. And I was like, but there's so much psychology that we were, we're resolving here. Yeah, I didn't feel much. Uh, I wasn't really hooked. In my, like Nothing was really like latching into my emotions during this episode. you know. And the rest of the series I had been. Other than the probably, you know, the, the part when they do actually bond with each other. I mean, uh, where, where Mark does rescue Steven in the sand. Well, yeah, I was going to say this was, and, and then this isn't to spoil Multiverse of Madness. I had a similar 
kind of complaint about that movie was that this kept giving me these scenes where I was like, this is so wonderful. Like, I love that back and forth between Steven and Mark, or even the back and forth between Layla and Khonshu I thought was great, where she's like, I'm not going to be your slave. Like, there are all these moments that hint at some really great character unpacking. And even for Harrow, I think he got slighted maybe the most in this episode because I, again, have been loving Ethan Hawke's performance, and he makes that ultimate sacrifice. And there are all those moments where he's like, hey, I... I have dedicated my life to you, but you know what? If my scales aren't uh, balanced, I accept my fate. Like, I loved those bits. And then, you know, he becomes Amit's avatar. And then pretty much from there, it's just like, well, okay, so we got to bind her to him, and there's the physical stakes, and as long as we can kill them, we'll be good. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I feel like it's all there. It just could have been more graceful, and it could have come down to more than just the plotting. Yeah, I still feel like it got a little too big for my taste. Personally. Too big, too too quickly. Yeah, yeah. Because like Amit, uh, for some reason, just doesn't leave much of an impression to on me. And why? First. And why does her avatar not get a cool outfit? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets to stay in the same robes. <laughs> At first, when she showed up, I was like interesting, and then she started talking, and I was like, yeah, that, I feel like this build up to Amit being unleashed really wasn't anything special. I, I didn't find other than like cool visual of giant Khonshu and giant Amit. The character of Amen and the build up to ultimately what she was doing. I really think this needed to be two episodes. It, I hate if that it this really would have changed complaint. everything. It Almost, didn't drop yeah. my stomach the way I wanted it to. Yeah. No, nor did it feel as, it didn't start feeling actually scary or menacing until she was like, we're judging everyone in Egypt right now. That <laughs> yeah. was and there were a bunch of moments that were cool like that. Like yeah. there were a bunch of moments where we got excited that like I, I want to give the, the episode a lot more credit for those things that did work. It's just the major, major thing of wishing it was more length is is uh, the undercurrent like we can say we loved you know the emotional ties of seeing that giant rapture we can say we enjoyed the emotional connection between them two and the fights and all those things but without the time between those moments it did feel like that's all we can talk about well yeah it's like there's there's moments and then there's scenes there's mm. like there's a big difference between them and i think that a lot of the the actual scenes were just not having the effect that I think they were intending, that, that that were desired. You know, like there's a lot I feel like you could pick apart here, and there's a lot I think you can isolate and look back on and go, "Well, I appreciate that." Like you brought up the scene for podcast listeners, John brought up the scene. Is that's me about uh, you know like when Conchu is is debating with Layla. I do like that reveal, though, of Conchie being like, I never wanted that girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, the, that was nice. The, J- the Jake reveal, I don't. Th- I think this might be one of the first times we had the show end in a post credit scene. We were, we were talking that this isn't like a continuation into the future and further. At, it is obviously setting up things, but it's also kind of the end of the show. And it's interesting to do that after some credits. And I, I don't know if I've seen that. Well, I think what's neat about that reveal, I know we're kind of hopping around all over the place here, but that's, you know, it's kind of of the vibe that's left here uh is that conchu is you know, he has a negotiation with mark and um steven you know and then it makes mark and steven feel like they're finally in control mm-hmm. of the situation with conchu and then the ending reveal shows you no they're not <laughs> they're they're not and they control. probably have never been in control and they're not even aware of it there's only like tease they're like by now they should be like there's a third personality in me they have to they at least somewhat deduce they, that. They haven't even said that to themselves. I'm like, <laughs> this is the second time. Maybe that's a defense mechanism. Like maybe they're they just you know, block protecting him that them. much. Yeah. 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 I mean, you get it here in that one bit of like that definitely wasn't me. Or that wasn't me. Well, I do but, like that he's Sp- he speak. He's a Spanish speaking character because uh, you know Oscar Isaac being Cuban and Guatemalan totally did not look that up in between setting up microphones. Uh, but him being Cuban Guatemalan and being able to represent that here is is awesome. Also, the ability that he has to go between languages and accents in the same sentence is staggering. Some of the acting in this, obviously the whole show, we've been praising the acting, but every time he transfers in between moments, and in this one now that he's doing it in real time, like he's actually both Steven and Mark live at us. Incredible work. Like yeah. truly staggering. Yeah, definitely. How do you guys feel about Harrow overall as a villain throughout the series? I think it felt like Ethan Hawke personally, his character, I really liked him more in the psych ward more than I did as actually Arthur Harrow. I like what he represented inside of Mark and Steven's mind more, but I know you really 
yeah, like harped I, on him a lot throughout this series. So I'm curious to know like how you feel about Arthur Harrow in total. Yeah, I mean MVP in term one of the MVPs in terms of performance. I mean, like, you know, all the flowers to Oscar Isaac, absolutely, but I, I really do love what Ethan Hawk has brought to this and and again, I liked the notes with him that carried through this, but I, I got to kind of agree with you that the most interesting and, and part of the interesting thing about the way he is the doctor in, you know, the, the, the you know, the mental asylum, you know, sort of spiritual way station is based on your association with him on Earth. But yeah, I, I feel like that is the most interesting stuff when it comes right down to it. And I kept wishing that there was, again, more time to explore him personally because there's so much really interesting connective tissue between him and Mark Stephen Jake etc his relation to Khonshu and everything and you know he gets kind of a raw deal with with Amit and I would have liked to have I don't know it's 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 interesting it's a badass and very kind of cold-blooded ending that they give to him but it's like oh, oh he's dead now I guess that's that <laughs> I don't really like that cliche anymore where character kills people constantly. And then when it comes down to the big baddie, they become a moral hero. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yes. like now is my time to be the yeah. good guy because the bad and, guy is left. And I especially <sighs> didn't like it here because that was ridiculous. Ridiculously was rushed. Vomit. He's been killing no. so many people. Like and as he is Moon now Knight Hunter is yeah. constantly murdering. <laughs> in this episode alone, he's like, "Stab, stab, stab, kill all yeah. you." But until the guy that's trying to kill the planet, yeah. no, he stays. Well, and yes. yeah, and, and the fact that so much of the conflict between Stephen and Mark is Stephen going, "Dude, you're a savage. You kill in cold blood. We can't do that anymore." Like. That's cool, that's fine, except this episode also then goes to swap that round and go, well, Mark's actually not that much of a savage. This Stephen Lockley, he's the savage. So it kind of muddies that up, too. You if, know? That, that scene felt very perfunctory to me in the way that was handled, and it just was just like, get the get the lines out of the way. That's how it like read to me in the moment. Just, it was so quick. Yeah. And especially after we had just had this really cool moment of introducing a new hero and having this really cool like power couple moment, to have that undermined by this very traditional, oh, this is a hero moment, it felt like, oh, we're subverting expectations and expectations. And, and that, mm. that the rest of the show hadn't felt that way for me. That's a very good point. Because I personally really liked how you know, Jake Lockley, you, you don't see him take out all the bad guys. You don't mm -hmm. see, although it might have been cool to do one of those like Fight Club montages oh, or I'd Joker love montages where you like go back and you see, dun, 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 you see dun, dun, all dun, dun, the craziness yeah, he did. Yeah, speaking see. Spanish in the, because I told you when he popped in the cab and he was like, what's that accent? I would yeah. love to see him speaking Just Spanish. Cut away to him cannon. killing five people and, and saying, Via con Dios. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the El Mariachi. There's just like a whole Robert Rodriguez movie yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's episode eight I want. Borrowing from Boba Fett. I didn't, I didn't. Didn't uh, didn't care for that scene, um, but well, because you could have come down to something interesting between the two avatars and between again somebody who has known Conchu's service, but also is now under Amit's service. Like you could have made an interesting conflict that also plays off of or bounces Look. off of what is literally gigantically happening also, in the backdrop. Also, Harrow didn't get the chance to really manifest his being the official Avatar, nor did we really have the actual conflict of the Avatars greeting Ethan because they got killed off camera. So, like, you've set up this thing where Ethan Hawke has been forgiven inexplicably because Oscar Isaac's like, yo, he's doing some stuff. And they're like, we don't believe you, Oscar Isaac. And then he marches in. They're like, oh, I guess he was right. Well, dead off screen. I, I would have liked to have had some more there. To me, the biggest disappointment of all this the biggest disappointment is that it did exactly what i was worried this finale would do which was be go big have a lot of action but we had five episodes prior even the third episode which i personally thought a lot of people love that episode I, I thought that was the weakest of the of the five i really felt like the thing they dropped the ball on the most was they dropped everything about conversations psychology and they just went for big you know they had that one great scene where you do see you know mark and steven entering back into their own mind working together beautiful defeat you know like overcoming the the manipulative the psychiatrist therapist uh in, in their own mind I, I thought that was a really great acceptance scene uh as on top of it all that was a really good one but like 
all the de- they had such good debates and conversations and, and philosophical existential conversations woven in throughout this series in so many ways and like discussions uh, even with Arthur Harrow with Layla with Mark with Stephen and then the, the gods debated in episode three at least you know discussing this and then here it's just like zip zip bang 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 you know well, and <laughs> yeah. to me that's my wandavision problem uh, is i yeah. really really loved wandavision and there was literally a transition Definitely. from ship of theseus to punch vision yeah like, it, it goes very quickly episode six felt like the marvel episode and i like marvel but if you're gonna let me have something that's a psychological and philosophical conversation and then suddenly pivot to punching that's not the show and like yeah. to me there was if this could have kept the punching but also kept the psychology if there was one more episode that's that's the balance they got to strike and that's why this had to have been two episodes and i don't think every show is six is loki six episodes yeah it is yeah wow it's i think it's a structure issue and wandavision's eight yep they're shorter that's true well they grow because yeah they start out being like 30 25 30 minutes and then they become like 45 50 55 and i really think that like you need like that flexibility worked and i think moon knight could have used a little bit of that like let this be seven this felt like studio notes in a lot of way of like we got to go back to, it's still a, a superhero show so you know let's let's get a little bit more lively here you know like what with the whole thing when they're the, the stakes of when Steven and Mark are reunited and they're walking back to, to get out. And there were still so many then, cool things, but yeah, it's just like, that's the thing. And, and then the, cool the, the, uh, the Cyrus, the boat, and then the friggin', yeah, I'm going to stop the waves. Like, this is, this is kind of It silly. starts to feel a little like a Disney movie yep. at, that, at yeah, those it's points. Silly. <laughs> it's silly. So Yeah, and it's also... And of Koi's having issues. You know this you is know a what, real You know what, you guys? I'm trying <laughs> to be a person yeah. that has a pain in the old <laughs> We're back. We're back. We sync. I got. I got three more minutes with Koi before he before he turns into a pumpkin. Before I am a pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah. Before right. I turn into Stephen Luck. Um, but yeah, you, t- you know, it's like last episode. A lot of these episodes just like are so invigorating that no matter how tired I am, they just spark a thought process. And here I'm just like, my feelings I'm left with are some of the coolest moments like the action was really cool like that was really getting me a lot of the time and and i and it was also that feeling too of like i really want to keep loving this so i'm really trying to give in to the, the cool even more but then by the time it wraps up i'm but it literally was the scene when uh mark is like i'm not gonna kill him you do it you know at that moment was when I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this this has totally lost me <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> for my, for me, like the the problem was how good the rest of the show was. That I my expectations were at that consistent a that like high concept, a really interesting, thought provoking situation, and then for the last episode to be, you know, a B B minus. It's not bad. It's not you know. Uh, it's just below the average show is not even a b for me but the average of this has been an a so a b feels like a a downgrade so comparatively is the problem and that's what's hard about these six episode shows is if you've got this momentum with five and then six doesn't stick the landing it affects your whole experience and i do think there could have been a bit of a different way to handle the the what was ref what was left of the story to tell especially after that remarkable fifth episode. Five, man. Well, because it makes that fifth episode then feel like it's out of a separate show and got dropped into this more sort of fun and swashbuckling thing. And if we could have had that, because I feel like five in general stands separate from all of them because they all have a certain reliance on adventure and we got to keep things moving and stuff and we're building the psychology and they're all crescendos there. And it doesn't feel like we gracefully came out of that crescendo into this. You know, it feels like we started in one show. We had that fifth episode to really kind of flood it with this saturation of emotion. And then the last one kind of ends up somewhere in the middle, kind of like floating in the middle of those things. I'm I'm curious re-watching it now that I have the expectations of the last episode being so action-packed if it'd be feel better now that you know like now that I know that's the route if the whole show you know knowing where it lands feels better I just don't think you can get back to light to lighter without feeling a little bit of of that kind of without feeling the difference in the weight you know because 
this does just feel like a lighter thing at the end. And there is something, too, about that that I think narrows the scope or makes the scope, again, feel a little bit more like a cartoon. And I think, you know, in reveling in some of those harsher, darker, more challenging emotions, you can then help legitimize all of the crazy magical circumstances around you. But the faster the circumstances have to unfold, the more everything starts to feel like a roller coaster ride. You know? I like what you just said about lighter and darker. I wish we had a couple moments to, like, appreciate the fact that that so many people were dying in the streets of Egypt and we were seeing these people like judging each other and then we were seeing like this massive horrific event and it was like 30 seconds like we didn't get time to realize how traumatic that was we didn't get time to realize like these people are judging their neighbor and killing them and that's all happening and then we've set up the whole show to that like that this is the revelations we were like waiting for Ahmed to come back for and then it was like we gotta get back to the fight and I just mm. I wanted to live there more that's all I just keep I, I sound like a broken record I just want more and I love that this is my problem but like I want more yeah yeah well here we are again another Marvel from now <laughs> good <laughs> moments some great moments in the finale a lot of great moments a lot of great moments overall where you guys rank the shows oh boy um, I this, like ranking stuff. I'm a list guy. I'm a Virgo. How many shows we got now? W it's top five six. V Loki. I'd still give the edge to Moon Knight, Falcon. This was yeah. You got two left. Hawkeye. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, was letting, I was letting you get there. Then episode four of What If of Doctor Strange, <laughs> and then What If. <laughs> it's its own little category. Four, so, yeah, oh, wait, what about it you, would John? probably be Loki, WandaVision, this, and Falcon and Winter Soldier can grapple for the next slot. Then uh, What If Hawkeye. So this is a little slightly above for me. It goes Loki, this, WandaVision for me. Okay. But those three are like this beautiful, like different, you know, top category. And then Falcon Winter Soldier, Hawkeye, what if? Man, this is tough because this one, I really, I don't know why I'm, I feel especially, as much as there were like some really cool, exciting moments, it's one of those things that the more I think about it, the more I feel like I'm in the sand. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah. oh, I, I'm feeling empty and cold because <laughs> right i think it hurts more when the show proves it can sing yeah, and so can be so great and then it doesn't yeah the... so when we talk about it i'm like oh i'm i'm withering away and i'm over yeah. here going like i like that moon knight mr knight fight and i really liked the dichotomy between the sizes See, and I'm... i really liked the moment where they were brothers and bonded again and I'm, I'm gonna stay in the happy space i'm going i'm over here like you know Somewhere out there, there's a timeline where this was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere there's a timeline where there's seven episodes. So I was very <laughs> excited seven about episode yeah. time. Every show on the seven episode timeline. Is there's the a same multiverse line. coy very excited about the seventh episode of Moon Knight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what did you guys? I think? at least had fun at the time I was watching it with you guys. Yeah. So that's what I'll say. Absolutely. I'll leave it there. It was fun at the time of watching it, and the, the less I talk about it, the more I can just appreciate the enjoyment I had. I wasn't bored. The Absolutely real fist not. of Khonshu was the friends we made along the way. You see, the only real problem I'd have is if I was bored, but I wasn't bored. Never so bored. if I'm not bored, then all right, fine. I'll you were up at you. two in the morning. morning. Not yeah. bored. Yeah, and I was up till... 6.30 yesterday in and the I morning. Would, so, and I would rather, yeah, I'm good now. I would rather <laughs> want more of what we're seeing, which I do, than want less of what we're seeing, which I don't. I would absolutely be excited for a season two. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I think yeah. we can all agree there. The imagination and the tonal expansion alone is, is worth the effort. I'd also love to see him pop into other different tones and how weird it would be if Moon Knight was just suddenly like hanging out with Spider-Man. Moon Knight have, and Deadpool. Sharon, have you given us mics? We're talking way longer than usual. Definitely. Good luck at it. <laughs> we like our voices. That. Here we are. So I'm not shit. Prepper. <laughs> you guys. You guys. No editing. I, I edit. Are oh, you doing this live? One of us edits. Yeah, I'm just oh. going to keep it uncut. Parts, yeah. All right. This one's going to be uncut. This one's going to be raw. It's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's just the computer going to sleep. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Guys. Bye. Love you all. Bye, everyone. Leave your thoughts. Bye, everyone. Cut. <laughs>